Hey folks, welcome back to the Dice Tower. I'm Sam. I'm JT. And this is our bottom five list for the year 2018. What that means is it's our numbers 10 through 6 of our favorite games of the year. Mm -hmm. Check that out. Check it out. It's pretty cool though because after you get through watching this here, you'll be able to jump over to our channel, the flip side of board games, and take out our top five, numbers five to one. So how was this year? I actually, this was more difficult than the last couple of years. To pick. To because, pick Yeah, 10. me too. I had a hard time like whittling it down. I mean. I had a hard time whittling it down. Too. I had I had 41 games. Tons of heavy hitters. 41 games, heavy yeah. hitters. <laughs> I mm -hmm. get it. I see what you did there. Because there's actually a game in there that's called Heavy Hitters. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's is. not on my list. The NAs, same just as last year. The uh, non-ranked game started on page 15. Uh, so there wasn't a change there. Uh, same as 2017. 78 games in the top 1,000. Was it 73 our highest last 73 time? 73 was last week. And we needed 72 and a half to... So we made up a lot so of... So we're way there. ahead. We're nine yeah, games yeah. ahead now. Yeah. Just... 78 games. You think 8% of the best games over all time came from this year. Wow. I mean, this <laughs> 8%. Oh, how many crossovers you got? Uh, crossovers. All right, crossovers. Oh my gosh. I think there's going to be possibly one, possibly two. I'm, I'm going to project three Ooh. as a possibility, but I could see where there's only going to be two. If there are not at least two, I cry foul, and this is not JT. <laughs> You're crying. Okay, well, I'll say two then, but that's uh, maybe three. No, nah, probably two. A lot of good games. So, Tons of good games. Without further ado, let's hit it. My number 10 is uh, probably one of the most thematic games from such a small niche of themes. A small niche of themes. <laughs> that I've ever seen in my entire life because this is like a cult classic movie IP. Mm -hmm. And if you liked the movie, you will understand all of why this, why I've said this is one of the most thematic games I've ever seen. Is this but Nemesis? You, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> this one's called Big Trouble. Oh, in yeah, Little yeah. China, yeah, yeah. the game. <laughs> if you like the movie, I do. You will absolutely enjoy the game. Whether you like the mechanisms and all that other kind of stuff, you'll like the experience that the game gives you because you're you're kind of literally playing through mm -hmm. the movie. Yeah. And it is such uh all the Jack Burton quotes come out and all of the weird quirky stuff from the movie mm -hmm. just I just love the right. experience that the load. game has because it is absolutely the movie in a box. Yep. So much fun. I really enjoy it. Um, and that's why it's my number 10. Big Trouble in Little China, no. the game. Very, very good pick. Not on his list. Not on my list. I honestly don't remember seeing it on there. But, yeah, I only had to go so far because there was oh, just I so see. much. My number 10 is a party game, I suppose, hidden trader game mm. called The Detective Club. Oh, yeah. Um, and The Detective Club, you're all playing out pictures and you're trying mm. to match everybody else's pictures and know what the clues are, you know, that kind of thing. Yep. And you're trying to sneak it in there. But these pictures are those beautiful, like, um, you know, like Alice in Wonderland type of crazy yeah. pictures. So they have so many different things in them. And you're trying to guess as the as the guessing person who's the you know who doesn't know or whatever else you know and it's mm -hmm. just a super fun game yep. it's it's that it's the next step up from Dixit and all those kind of things yeah. and um, like still a really light or game. whatever else it is very still light really yeah light it's a very light game and, and very enjoyable mm -hmm. um, but I just love Detective Club it goes great you play it with anybody yeah and, that's a good pick all right well done artwork. My number nine. My number nine is a game that uh, I don't even know if you've played this game, so I don't even know if you can have it on your list. I think you've played it. I know you've played its successor. 
Okay. But you haven't, I don't know that you've played this one. It's called Lords of Hellas. I have not played Lords of Hellas. Yeah, I didn't think so. We've I think had you, this conversation. I, you might, yeah, I know, yeah. I know. I think you might like this one better because you're more of a Greek pantheon person than you are a Norse pantheon person. I'm not. I'm like them both you, equally. You like them both equally? Yeah. You. I have to play. Turn in, coat. <laughs> in divinity, I have to play whatever. But in divinity, yeah. I, I love them both. Uh, but, I mean, basically, yes. Lords of Ragnarok was largely an improvement upon mm -hmm. uh, Lords of Hellas. Uh, and if you understand, it's, it's largely kind of like a, an area control type game where you're trying to gain points by controlling different areas of the board using uh, God's special powers uh, mm -hmm. to your benefit the best uh, over other people. So it's that kind of game. Uh, but it's large. Uh, it's it's set within the the uh, Greek pantheon of, of gods. Yeah. Lords of Ragnarok is set in the Norse pantheon, so you can take your pick as far as that's concerned. But there were improvements and smoothing out of mechanisms and that kind of thing from Lords of Hellas to Lords of Ragnarok. So you can take that for what it's worth, but Lords of Hellas is still a really fun game yeah, um, sure. a, a, as far as that goes. And that's why it made my number nine on this list, Lords of Hellas. I haven't played it, otherwise it might have made my list. Mm -hmm. It probably would have made my list. Yep, I wasn't counting it as one of our possible yeah. crossovers. All right, well, my number nine is called Luck, Luck, Luck in a Cauldron. Uh, it's called the Quacks of Quedlinburg. Oh, yeah. And the Quacks of Quedlinburg, you are drafting chips, you're buying new chips, but you're filling a bag full of chips, and these chips are all different ingredients, ingredients for your witch's yeah. brew, for yeah. your cauldron. Um, really, you're all quacks. You're all, um, the way that it, it works is you're all like herbalists, right? Or yep. you're making potions for people at like county fair, and you're snake trying to oil. make the. Snake oil. Yep, you're making snake oil. You're making the. <laughs> putting the spiders in there, and the mandrake, and the. You know, all those different things. And each of them score differently and move differently around this track. But it's yeah. just a push your luck. You're trying to get as as far around this track as you can every round without mm -hmm. busting. Um, and by busting, you're pulling these little white chips out that are like cherry bombs. Um, and if you get more than seven of those, your cauldron explodes. And yeah. um, it's just a really fun game. Uh, it's really cool. We got, like, all the special, like, BGG, um, you know, geek geek up bits and things like yeah. that that are really awesome but we love this game i love this game yeah it's a good um, one super fun this is one of the only only ways that i have actually enjoyed pulling things out of a bag mm -hmm. because you're building your own bag yeah so what you put in there is 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 what you're going to be pulling out eventually it's not like you have this communal bag where sure. i can work 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 pull nothing and then sure. you can work work and pull all pull the good all stuff it. yeah it's not like that and i hate that uh, mechanism in games but bag pulling in this one works well and uh, i do enjoy it. it it it's a fun game i don't know that it deserves all of the fanfare that it does get because a lot of people love this game and i'm not saying that they shouldn't but i think it does have its its uh, hit or misses but yeah. i really enjoy it i think when you play this game you have to play i mean just like any heavy push your luck game. you just got to play it for yeah. fun right yep. you're not playing Absolutely. like to be serious and to win by a thousand points and everything else <laughs> not playing for that you're playing to yeah watch everybody's people cauldrons explode and laugh and joke <laughs> and yeah absolutely so, that's yeah. a good pick my number eight it's another kind of area control type of game and this one is from breaking games i think it's what it's called yep sure is we're not going to have any crossovers. Rise of Tribes. Rise of Tribes is a really neat uh, game where you're basically all kind of uh, uh, trying to secure the best places on the board for your tribe. Got it right here. I'm going to pull it out. There you go. Because why not? Why not? By Brad Brooks. Use it or lose it. Use it or lose it. But it's got great components. Uh, dice rolling. You're, you're, you're growing your... your uh, your area of influence, using your uh, developments to do all that kind of stuff, moving around the board. 
uh, gathering yeah, it resources. Good. It's a really fun game. I really enjoy it. Oh, I've got the box wrong. I'm it sorry. It looks good. But it's a great little game. I love Breaking Games anyway. And so. Breaking Games is a good company too. Yep. Yeah. So that I need to put that. Cool. I need to make a list of all but of the games I need to play. It's a great little game. Really enjoy it a lot. And that's my number eight, Rise of Tribes. Nice. My number eight is an extremely Euro game. Uh oh. No. It's not a Euro game. Well, it is a Euro game, but it's a it's a dice drafting game called Coimbra. Um, Coimbra. Coimbra is an mm. amazing game, mechanically a fantastic game. You're drafting dice, um, and you're drafting them so that in the castle you can purchase these different characters, and these mm -hmm. different characters um, give you different benefits, uh, which are working up tracks. And you have uh, four different tracks. One's a victory point track. One's a um, coin track, one gives you shields, and what's the fourth one? The fourth one moves your little pilgrim around the center board, mm. um, and as he moves around, he gets benefits and bonuses. Um, but you're set collecting some with those guys. Uh, you're trying to raise up these tracks and get higher on the tracks, but whatever dice, if I, if I have a red six, the cool thing about it is if I put the red six over here to get a person, you're going to sequentially order everybody's dice. So my six probably will go first, especially if it's the first one there. But you also have to pay the price based on the dice you put. So because I go first, I have to pay six to get a person. Oof. And if the person behind me only puts a two, then they can play two to get the next person. Mm. So, so you're balancing how much you're spending by drafting these dice. Mm. And then I said a red six. That's a, there's no reds, by the way. <laughs> Say it's a green six, that might be better. But then with the green, then after I buy a person with it, then the green dice is now going to pay me or um, give me income based on my green track. Mm. So you're only getting income based on the track of the color of the dice. So you're balancing the color you want, what kind of income you want, who mm. you want to buy, values. All of those things balance really nicely. That's really cool. It's a really cool game um, and quite a pretty game too. Yep. That's cool. Coimbra's good. My number eight, Coimbra. My number seven is a Western, a U.S. Western themed game. And a lot of people think Western, Great Western Trail is a Western themed game or... Sure, There's lots of Western you know, themed games. All this kind of stuff, but this one is like... The U.S. The Western West theme game in a box. Okay. Western Legends. You want to be the sheriff? Go around and and throw the law around and get points that way. Absolutely, go for it. If you want to be a, a cow poke and uh, have your herds of cows and and turn them in and sell them and all that and get points that way, absolutely go I'd ahead. I'd be and called do that. a rancher. Sure, cowpoke, cowpoke <laughs> rancher, whatever. Uh, if you want to be the outlaw and you want to just raise mayhem and chaos and make points that way, you can do that. That's one of the things that I loved about this game. It's like a yeah. sandbox set in the U.S. West, and I love it. It's so fun. It's so it's such a thematically fun game, no matter what you choose to do. Uh, and of course, it's got poker in there because you know you can play cards yeah. and all that kind of stuff. That was the West. a huge part of the West, apparently. Yeah. Um, and it's got all the stuff that you would expect to have in a action-packed uh, game about the U.S. Wild West. Cool. Love it, and uh, I've just I've just really enjoyed. It. I haven't played it a whole lot, but the times I've played it are have been super memorable. Nice. Super memorable. So that's my number seven, Western Legends. They didn't have all these board games back then, just a pack of cards. Truth. That's all they got. That's all true. Right. We need, that's why we need to make a, a time machine. Take them back, board games? Take Western Legends and no. play it with Billy the Kid. No, he'd burn it. He'd use it for kindling. He'd shoot us in the face. Yeah. No, <laughs> no he wouldn't. He wasn't evil. All oh. right. Anyways, my number seven is a game that Sam's not extremely fond of. Oh, um, boy. Because it is a cube pusher um, in Sam's estimation because he has no, um, what do you call it? Imagination. Imagination. I'm just kidding. It's yeah, a game okay. called Vindication. <laughs> in Vindication, you're dropped off on this little island which you have to explore. 
um, and you're basically trying to increase your reputation. You are trying to do, you know, make your mount better. You're trying to visit all these different places, but you're basically getting cubes. Yeah. Um, when you cut all of the, you know, theme out of it, you're getting cubes. You're trading cubes for different cubes, and you're trading those for points. And you know, but uh, there's so much to this game, and so many cool paths, and getting pets, and all of these kind of things. Um, mechanically with if there was no theme at all which there probably was no theme at all when they made it mechanically it is superb um and then and then the theme got put on top of there um mechanically this game is superb it's dripping with glue that's how pasted on that theme was yeah that might be true and that's probably why i disliked it so much sure is because i was really interested in the theme yeah. The theme looks it's really good. It's got fun. a cool theme. I mean, it's got a great yeah. theme. Yeah. But the mechanisms mm -hmm. don't really have anything to do with the theme. And that's why I didn't really like it that much. Yeah. I it's mean, it, so it, it. They say you come here as a scoundrel, basically, and you're trying to become vindicated, right? Mm -hmm. Vindication mm -hmm. is what you're trying to do by doing all these things around the island. But, but it's very And that's a cool, on. like, redemptive cool. theme. Mm -hmm. yep. I love that theme. Yep. But it's like. And now just push stuff around on the board for I a know. while. And I'm like, eh, whatever. One of the most mechanically sound games I've ever played. I agree. And fun. I, 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 I can't disagree <laughs> with that, but I just don't call that fun. Yeah, fair. I, I really it's want fun. my theme to interact well with the mechanisms, and this one was just that for All me. All right. But good pick for you. Yeah. Speaking about pushing things around on a board, uh -oh. um, this one is uh, called, my number six, is called Roar, King of the Pride. Mm. Roar, King of the Pride. And you are absolutely just pushing your little lions mm -hmm. uh, around on a board, but it, it, it's cool because it um, you're using your pride and your pride can actually take over other prides. And it's really just area control. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of cool things about how you can grow your tribe uh, or your pride rather, sorry. Um, everybody's prides start off a little bit different with a little bit of uh, special abilities that they can do that other prides can't. Um, and you can kind of get close to them uh, by how you choose to grow your tribe mm. but, or your pride rather, but not yeah. exactly. So you're always a little bit different than everybody else. And that's one of the things I like about it. It also has Vincent Dutrait's artwork. So another huge bonus for me. Um, it it feels like, mechanically speaking, it feels like a very family weight game. But it can be very cutthroat. Uh, yeah, I so can imagine it's So it tough. takes itself out of the family category. It can be played very much in a family weight uh, context. True. And you can have fun. Staying away from each other and doing all that kind of stuff. Mm. But it can also be played very cutthroat. Yeah. And so it has that going for it, actually, but that you can play it in those two different contexts, and it's still a very fun game in both. Sorry, Susie, you're dead. <laughs> wow, your pride is so small. Um, but uh, I really enjoy this game. I've, I've enjoyed this game for a long time. So my number six, the last one on this segment, Roar. King of the Pride. Nice. My number six is a tableau builder in a forest called Everdale. Oh, yeah. I knew this <laughs> Not on his list. list. But yeah, Everdale Not on my list, is yeah. a fantastic I've never, game. I've never played this game. Um, really? Nope. Never played it. You have to play it. Uh, okay. I will. Okay. I don't have anything against it. No. Everdale's a great game. It's a tableau builder. You're building your tableau. I can't think right now. 15 cards, I believe. Um, there's a center market area. It's worker placement. You're placing your little animals, and there's everybody has different animals. The meeples look exactly little turtles and hedgehogs. And oh, that's cool. Whatever you have the, you know, your little rat guys, and but you go over here and you're picking up a couple of berries and twigs and little chunks of stone and amber and things like that, um, so that you can build the buildings, you know, so for your people to live in. It has a really cool mechanic where if you build. Um, a house, say, or I'm trying to think of a, a, a specific one right now that I can't for some reason. But if you build a building like the clockmaker's building, mm -hmm. clockmakers, then if you have the clockmaker in your hand, you can play the card 
And then you can put the clockmaker and just put this little token on because he's in his house now. You mm -hmm. know, and that building's for him. So that's a nice mechanism to get a couple of cards down at once. Yeah. Um, but this is a game where as you're going through the seasons, you only have a couple of actions in the first season. And you think by the end of the first season, you're like, I'm not going to get nothing done. I'm not even going to get three <laughs> cards, let alone 15. <laughs> and then every season ramps up until the last one, and you're like, Oh shoot! I'm gonna get 15, and I got room for. I need to put two more in there. How do I? You know what I mean? So, yeah. it just has a nice flow to it. It's a beautiful game. The components are great. There's a new version out. Um, um, secret. I can't remember what it's called right now, but I want to play this new version. It's, you're at the sea, so your components mm. are seashells and these uh, other kind of cool okay. things. But um, regardless, Everdell's a great game. Great tableau builder. Um, I like this game. Very cool. I've just never played, so yep. I, I've 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 watched it. Isn't it the one that has the, the it has the, the tree? tree. Yeah, yeah. I've I've always wanted to learn how to play this game, just never had a chance. Yeah, it's a great game. Good pick. All right. Well, that is our numbers Quick. ten through six. That was pretty fast. We're gonna get on back over to the flip side so that you guys can come watch the top five. Uh, games from 2018 so please come on over there and check that out because uh, it probably will be a couple of really good lists you're gonna have 10 games that you're gonna need to go out and buy yep. immediately after you watch that top five <laughs> it's true that means no crossovers no crossovers mm -hmm. thanks there's for joining us on the dice be, tower here there's probably gonna be some crossovers. there might be thanks for joining us be. on the dice tower we'll see you on the flip later. side take care see ya Thank you.